I'm going to call to order the meeting of Monday, November 12th, and turn it over to the city clerk. So at this point, I will administer the oath of office to our newly elected members. If Mayor Rep would like to join me down at the podium. And then my husband can join me there too. I solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of mayor. The duties of the office of mayor. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. funny to stand out on this side, but I've got something I want to say <laughs> before she continues <laughs> on. Before the clerk swears in the newly elected members of council, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who supported me in last week's election. It was overwhelming, and the city's citizens of Port Huron can be confident that I will continue to make decisions with theirs and the best city's best interest in mind. My contact information is on the city's website, and I encourage the sharing of concerns and or solutions to issues before us. For those leaving the Diaz, Council Members Ruiz and Lamb, thank you for your service and commitment to the city and its residents. You have had to make hard decisions, but ultimately you have left the city a better place for its residents. For those who ran for office but did not gain a seat, stay involved. You are to be commended for even putting your name on the ballot. For those taking the oath tonight, I would like to offer my congratulations. I'm looking forward to working with everyone on City Council for betterment of our city and for its continued success. Thank you. So if I could have our new council members join me down at the podium. Council Member Beaton, Council Member Ashford, and Council Member Pemberton, please. You sure can. So they don't have a difficult month. How about I stand over there? I think they were, it's clearing out. Everybody's going to be in front in a minute. <laughs> okay. I do solemnly swear. That, that I will support, support the Constitution, Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state and the Constitution of this state and that I will faithfully discharge the duties and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Council Member of the Office of Council Member according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability. Thank you. <coughs> like to thank everyone for your support uh, and returning me back to the, uh, to, uh, the Port here in City Council and I would do my God-given best to continue serving you in the most upright with integrity and the love for the great city that we live in and I just like to say about um, I didn't take you for granted that's a come I didn't spend a lot of money or anything but I know we do a lot of volunteering and you know sometimes it's a thankless job and you just don't know. But Port Heron, you just, you were just so overwhelming and you just went from your, your heart. And you know, and you can't pay for stuff like that. And so I really, really do appreciate you all so very much. So thank you very much and God bless you. <laughs> Would either one of the two new council members like to say anything before we move forward? Yeah. Sure. You don't have to leave your seat Thank if you don't you. want to. <laughs> You're going to stay right there. 
to the residents of Port Huron, thank you so much for your trust in me, and I promise to do my very best to represent you. As Mayor Rep said, our information is going to be published on the website, so I welcome um, concerns and solutions. And uh, to the, the men and women that I ran with, thank you so much. Uh, it was my pleasure to get to know you, and I can't wait to see what is next for you, and uh, I'll be cheering you all the way. Thank you. I also would like to thank the residents for uh, voting me in. This is a really exciting opportunity and I also just want to thank everyone in this room that came here to support me tonight. You all had to put up with me while I ran this campaign since February, so you did a good job. <laughs> thank you for this opportunity to serve the city. I'm looking forward to it. Get back to the business of the meeting and the clerk can take the roll. Council Member Archibald? Here. Council Member Ashford? Present. Council Member Beaton? Here. Council Member Harris? Here. Council Member Pemberton? Here. Council Member Warden? Here. Mayor Rep? Here. Move on to appointment of the Mayor Pro Tem. Now is the time for nominations for the appointment of the Mayor Pro Tem. I'll open it up. Madam Mayor? Yes. I'd like to place the nomination Cherry Archibald, Council Member. Thank you. Is there any other nominations? Mayor Rep. Council I'd Member? I'd like to place Scott Warden in nomination. Thank you. Is there any other nominations? Is there any other nominations? We will close the nominations, and because we have more than one person, everyone in front of them does have a slip of paper. Please write the person either Council Member Archibald or Council Member Warden on there and then sign it and pass it back to the clerk, please. Or she'll pick it up. We have five uh, votes for Council Member Archibald and two for Council Member Warden. Council Member Archibald and the Mayor. Thank you. She gets up to do the roll again. <laughs> I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Mayor Pro Tem. Of the office of Mayor Pro Tem. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. With the, uh, the next item on the agenda is the minutes from the previous meeting. Is there a motion to receive and file? So, so move, Matt. So move. Uh, <laughs> su support. Okay, Councilmember Harris, supported by Councilmember Ashford. Is there any additions or deletions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes stand as submitted. We do have one presentation tonight. If the clerk would please read that. Representatives from Enterra Environmental will provide an update on the leaf pickup program. Uh, 
Hi, um, I'm the operations manager for MTER Environmental. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that um, we are on the project. We are um, currently on still the zone one. We will, within another day, we will be on to zone two and we will work it from the north to the south. And um, it's we've had a lot of the issues just with uh, the way that the weather's been, uh, it's created a lot of um, just the vac problem. So I think we'll, uh, it, it definitely was a lot drier today. We were averaging about five loads per truck. So I think we should be all on set by, um, by the end of this week for sure. Do you expect to have the both zones done by the end of this week then, is that it? Yes, yes we do. And just for the record, could we have your name? Um, it's Fred, long time. And Fred, just so folks at home know, if your zone starts, say, on the 4th, like my zone did, it doesn't get done on that day. It has up to about a week or so to get that zone done. It just means we're starting your zone the 4th. I got lucky, and you didn't pick up mine till late this afternoon. And so I was actually able to get two uh, rakes in. Actually, my wife was able to get two rakes in. And so we got <laughs> yeah. two rakes in before you picked it up. <laughs> Correct. So, that's all. Is there anyone on council who has any questions? You're right. Council just just to com just to comment, that's that's probably the biggest topic on on the street is it is the leaf pickup, and uh, I do a lot of walking in the neighborhoods, and, and plus I had a couple of calls this afternoon from the north end wanting to know why they quit in the middle of Palmer Park, and uh, didn't finish the park. I got up the there. same call. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, so Mayor Rep knows then quite yes. how <laughs> predominantly this, this conversation was. But anyways, uh, it's, I think it's the, the people care. And I think they're really afraid about what the weather can do to, to your pickup promises and stuff. And yeah. uh, I, just, I just hope that uh, you guys start making it visible out there because that seems to be your biggest problem is not being visible to people see you moving the leaves. So good luck the rest of the way, though. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, Council Member Ashford. Um, how far back were you? How, how far late were you due to the weather? Um, we're on the top zone on uh, zone one, okay. which is um, we have like from uh, sorry. Well, just give me the number of days. How far back are you? That'll help. Oh, I think just one. Just one day you're yeah. behind? And then you're due to the weather and your machinery, is it operational that's causing the problem or you just don't want to be out in the weather? What is Just operational. Just operational yep. and getting the leaves and putting them in, yeah. Yeah, for an example, like on Saturday, we worked Saturday, we had um, six units running. Um, however, we have to quit at a certain time because of, of where we have to dump. Okay. We use um, two different facilities here in um, just outside the city and both of them closed so you know we have we had to stop because if we continued loading at that time with as wet as everything it would have frozen right in the units okay. and then we wouldn't have been able to start today okay and what do you think we could do uh, when you come up with these hiccups and how do we get word out to our uh, our residents that well, they're all certainly welcome to call our facility. Um, I checked on that this afternoon at five o'clock and we had only received 15 calls today from people wondering, you know, where we were and when we were gonna start zone two. So, you know. Okay, do you return the calls in a timely manner? Yes. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Thanks, Fred, for taking the Thank time. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We'll move on now to public comment. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the City Council this evening? Come forward, give us your name, and you have four minutes. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. <clears throat> My name is Steve Fernandez, and I live at 310 here on Avenue. <clears throat> My concern is, um, it's been a little over a year since the lights have been put up in the downtown corridor. And as a business owner of multiple um, businesses on that street, and as you well know, the future uh, home of uh, a grocery store on the corner of 
here on in Grand River Avenue. Um, we're really concerned about the gap in lights. So we'd like to ask uh, myself, my wife, and multiple business um, owners from the street, we'd like to know what our plan is to get the rest of the uh, lights put up that we're missing, the, the gap right there in Grand River Avenue and uh, Port Huron. <clears throat> or I would also offer a solution that we are willing to pay to buy a pole to put in your right of way to get the lights hung up if there's a, a failure to reach agreement on uh, getting the, the lights hung on the building like the rest of the, the units are. So like to know uh, if we can get that addressed. And if we can, if you want to take us up on the solution, there is a group of business owners that would gladly pay to get the uh, acquire the pole, the, the proper size pole that you guys would need to erect the lights on your right of way. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for bringing the grocery store downtown. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More importantly. <laughs> Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the council? <laughs> Not to be outdone. <laughs> Michelle Jones, also 310 Port Huron, um, or Huron Avenue. Uh, also, what we would also like to ask, in addition to the lights, is the benches, if we could get the benches refurbished. So that as we get that, and we do get the grocery downtown, that everything looks great and sparkling, so that'll be all nice and presented. And again, we also have a solution for that. And if what we would be asking is if the city could give us the materials, the waterproof stain, sandpaper, and have the power in the um, planters so that we could do that. We can get a group of volunteers and business owners to come and actually do the benches. Consider it done. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that volunteer part right. and he said consider it done. <laughs> that, okay, we'll get together and we'll see what we do to get the stain and stuff. All right, thank you. Thank you. Larry Jones, 208 here on Avenue. Um, kind of a couple of things I want to talk about here and to lead up to something. But, uh, you know, we started buying buildings here in 2010 and 11. Um, and we, we kind of put a plan together that we had to buy several buildings um, that were run down so that we could rehab them before people came in and bought them just as an investment. Because there's people that don't really care about the town. They just want to buy a building and sit on it and wait, think they're gonna double money, okay? And that's kind of what happened, and it's, it's really nice that Steve and Michelle wound up, were able to buy the Emory building because, you know, me and Brent were actually, had that pretty well bought at one time, and Scott Warden and his partner uh, for $5,000 more, $3,000 more, bought it from an under us, as an investment and then turn around and for instead of 245 they wanted 500,000 you know to uh, sell it back to us and so you know people like that don't make there's not good for a town does not make a town grow and in this election some things that I heard um, you know I, I wasn't real happy with you know we don't vote not vote for people because of their race their color their gender their age their, whether they vote no or yes on everything. We vote for on people that are committed to our city, that we feel are capable of, of you know, because you, know, you guys put up with a lot in this town, a lot of criticism, you know, a lot of positive, but a lot of negative. You guys work very hard at this, and you know, so I commend all of you. But then also, you know, the negativity, you know, Mr. I, I'm, I'm pointing at Scott Warden because I'm very upset, you know, he talks about you know, he is the spokesperson for people downtown. Well, I want people to publicly know, Scott does not talk on my behalf in most of the people that I know in downtown, okay? Some of the things, and I don't know if it's legal issues or what, you know, that, that he has going on with his building and things downtown, but as a council member, I, I think it's kind of unfair, um, some of the things that he has said, some of the things he has done, you know, you. You vote for people because you feel that they have the love for the downtown. Um, and I guess just to wrap this up, I, I don't feel that, Scott, I don't feel you have that. And I'm really asking you to, uh, uh, publicly asking you to resign from, from your position. And so we can get somebody in there that will sit there 
and that will work with the other council members, work with the city, quit making the, the uh, criticism and the, you know, the uproar that you're causing. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the city council this evening? <laughs> I won't keep you to four minutes either. <laughs> I won't need four minutes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was not to be at the last council meeting. My last official time uh, circumstances were that prevented me from being here. So I needed to come and say basically thank you, number one, for uh, anybody who's on city council and anyone in the audience and out there who did run and put their name out there. To me, you have earned the privilege of coming and speaking before this council at any time because it's, it's your right. You just you, you care about your city, and I'm proud of that. I uh, served nine years, and uh, it was an interesting time, and I am glad. I had a purpose in joining at the time, and I went on at the same time with some very, very good people. Along the way, I've met and served with a number of good people. I see two new ones, and congratulations to you two. Please take the training that's offered. I did, and I think it's very, very uh, worthwhile in doing that. And now I'd like to thank the residents of the city, excuse me, for uh, Yes, the residents of the city, number one, for the vote that they did some time back in supporting us. That was just such a vote of confidence that I think we just st stood proud at that time. And now, with the new election and such, <clears throat> I see nothing but good things happening in the future. I truly do. This place is really, really moving forward. It's no longer just talk. There's people who are taking action. And I'm proud of being a member of this city. To James Freed, one of the best things I feel that I was ever part of was hiring you as city manager. And I see nothing but good things in the future. Listen to all the advice I give you along the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, James. <laughs> My days of that are now numbered, obviously. <clears throat> but I, I do think you've been good for the city. And, um, and I'd also like to thank all the department heads that are part of our city, our legal representation. Anyone we had in place at the time when I first joined were good people, and solid. Everyone who's taken their place along the way, new faces, you've done a remarkable job. Smooth transitions, and we keep going up and up in terms of the leadership that you provide. We are lucky to have every one of you. And our police, fire departments, the same kind of things can be said. It's a great city. We've got a great council. Please keep moving forward. And may I say <clears throat> to the city residents, thank you for voting in uh, Mayor Pauline Rep. I challenge anyone who wants to have a kind, gentle, civil um, conversation about that, that um, she found herself in a unique position to give. She chose to give at the time she did. And I'll, uh, and I'll say nothing, but I don't think it's going to be easy for anyone to duplicate how much time you've given to that position. And there are a number of you on city council who do the same. but. Uh, you're a good friend, Pauline, but I also have to say that in terms of professional, um, professionalism that you've given to this position, I, I thank you for doing that. And again, thank you. Don't run away. Way would be nice, and it's uh, from City Council and the administration and a grateful community for all the years that you served. You've done a wonderful job, and we'll miss you tremendously. Well, I have a smile on my face, and it's for a reason. So <laughs> I know it's time for a change. <laughs> and you can have. There you go. Well, thank you. Council member. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and also, uh, we will be uh, putting placing a brick with your years of service in the International Flight Plaza. Oh, Not to the spring thank you. now, but thank you very much. Doing that too, it's so. quite an honor. I appreciate that very, very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. A two, a two, oh, that's a picture. <laughs>
<clears throat> now we're losing the audience yes. <laughs> as the time moves on. Our TV ratings are going to go down without Rico. I know, I know. Uh, we'll move. Is there anybody else that would like to address the council under public comment? Hi, I'm Stacy uh, Demick, and I'm off of uh, 19th and Chestnut area. And unfortunately, we weren't able to address um, Fred Longtime, Longtime yeah. from Mterra. <laughs> Excuse me. I want to tell you what it was like in our neighborhood at pickup time so that the council member and everybody knows what we're experiencing. Um, last weekend, or last Tuesday? Wednesday. When did I say Wednesday? Wednesday. I was in the kitchen and I'm hearing this. Bang, bang. Actually, let me, let me step back. Earlier in the day, they came through with garbage pickup. And I feel bad because I have been one that has called them, Tara. And I should have called and said, your garbage men were awesome. They took the cans, they turned them upside down so they wouldn't roll away, they'd chase them down the street. Because a lot of times our cans get run over, they get, you know, it's all over the place. And so they were really good. And then we're looking and nobody picked up the leaf bags. And then uh, the garbage, the recyclables, it was getting dark. It was like 5.30 and I was back in the kitchen which is the back of the house, and I'm hearing all this banging noise, and I thought, well, maybe somebody's moving into the house across the street. I went outside, and it was the re recycle bins. They're in the middle of the street, they dump them in, and they heave them, and they're bouncing, and they're going all over down the street. I walked outside, went to bring my, my cans in, my, my recycle bins in, and just in one block on 19th Street between Chestnut and White, there were three bins in front of the street, in front of parked cars, and it was getting dark. Then I could hear the garbage men, the next block down, more than halfway down, expletives, F-bombs, and m was closed by then, you know, for me to call. I would have liked to have talked with this gentleman about the behavior because I don't think our neighborhood children need to hear that. I'm nervous, I'm sorry, but my voice <laughs> And the other thing that I would have liked to have asked was <clears throat> when the trucks are full and they're sucking the leaves up, we've all seen the Facebook videos, they're spewing out of the truck as fast as they're going in. It doesn't help. There's, there's, there's no sense in doing that. They need to correct that. But I don't feel me making another phone call. And when I call being told, well, we have to hear from three people in the same area with this problem, you're not going to get three people that are going to have enough time or gumption that aren't going to want to do anything except for get on Facebook and complain to everybody else and not actually do something about it. So I really feel like they need to hear from you. Um, I, I think that the, the regular garbage crew, that they're really improved, but they're like in three facets and they still need help. So that's all I got to well, say. Thank you thank for you. your comments. Thank if you. you. Could, you know, can we have Eric? Yeah, Eric, if you get her information as well. Um, and we will, I'll talk to MTR tomorrow about your concerns as well. I have seen the Facebook video about the leaf spewing out the top. And whenever a truck gets close to full, that's actually pretty typical. I saw the video, we analyzed the video. That is kind of normal, it's kind of unfair, but when he gets towards to 30%, or like 80% full, 90% full, that is typical for leaves to fall out the top and typically they pull it out of service pretty quick. I talked to M-Terra about that leaf truck, and they said it was with only a half a boulevard, and then they pulled it out when it gets full. Uh, so we did address that, but I will bring up your other concerns. I appreciate you bringing that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to address the City Council this evening? Seeing no one, I'll declare public comment closed. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Tim <coughs> Archibald, supported Support. by Council Member Ashford. Uh, Mayor Rep. Councilmember Warden. Can we just remove number seven, the 18 134, from the consent agenda? Sure. We'll take the vote. Councilmember Archibald? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Councilmember Pemberton? Yes. Councilmember Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes. The items on the consent agenda, approving the decertification of Scott Avenue between Pine Grove and 11th Avenue, accepting Shenandoah Avenue into the city street system, 
accepting Old Squire Lane into the city street system and approving the appointment of Carrie Contu to the Beautification Commission for a term to expire January 30th, 2020. Uh, we will then go to from the city manager number one. Accepting the bid from Northgate Ford in the amount of $59,602 for two 2019 Ford F-250 4x4 standard cab pickup trucks with an eight-foot box and snow plow for use by the utilities division. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Ashford, is there a second? Second. Councilmember Harris, is there a discussion? Uh, Madam Mayor, before you have a replacement of a 2002 Dodge truck and a 2002 Dodge pickup truck, uh, about 16 years old, uh, they have an immediate amount of run time, but these Dodge vehicles are rusting out. They're almost not safe to keep on the road. Uh, these will be our last vehicle purchase for the budgeted year. So we bring all of our vehicle purchases. In the, so fiscal year starts July. We do all of our, our purchasing of vehicles in the onset of the fiscal year. This will be the last vehicle purchase for the year. Um, we did match Signature Ford, came in at low bid. We did give an opportunity for Northgate Ford uh, to bid on this vehicle. Uh, and so uh, we appreciate Northgate Ford matching the price. They're all budgeted. I'm Correct, all budgeted, budget. Correct. all under budget, yep. Okay. Any questions from council discussion? We'll take the vote. Council Member Ashford? <clears throat> yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item two. Accepting the bid from Steve Hyde Trucking LLC in the amount of $10,350 for Class 2 sand to be delivered to 1808 Bancroft Street. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Archibald and Councilmember Pemberton. Is there discussion? Mayor Rep. Councilmember Harris. I just want to congratulate whoever got these bids up. I think this is the first time that I can remember in a long time where we got more than one bid for the sand. So mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a big plus. Thank you. Madam Mayor, just for uh, information purposes, this is the sand that we, we buy sand and put it out at our, waste, at our utility site. So when we do a water main dig or a street repair, we need a certain grade sand to put underneath the road to compact. This is that sand. And how often do you do that? I believe Excuse once me. a year. Twice a year. Twice a year. Any other questions? <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll take the vote. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item three. Accepting the quote from Atlantic Signal in the amount of $13,622 for the purchase of 21 Comtech ACH single communication headsets with replacement gel cups for use by the police department. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Councilmember Beaton, supported by Councilmember Ashford. Got to get used to new voices. <laughs> <laughs> when you're looking down, you don't always know. Uh, is there discussion? Uh, can we have an explanation? Yes, Chief Platts will give an explanation. Also, this funding comes from the Enhanced 901 Fund. Right. So our communication fund, which is restricted for anything communication, radio related, it cannot be used for general operating. It's coming from those dollars. And that's a good thing. Yes. Okay. Mayor Rep, City Council, City Manager Freed. Um, I do actually have a headset. Oh, sure, I'm telling you. You're all set. <laughs> yeah, let the fire department all do. Oh, okay. <laughs> so prior to coming to council for this purchase, we actually went to the uh, law enforcement support and tried on. office, okay. which is the 1033 program for the military. We actually received 42 of these headsets, but prior to us getting them, they came to us in not so good of shape. Okay. They looked okay on the website, but when you looked at the standard, they said um, okay. When we got them, we tried them out. They don't work. We had to piecemeal uh, several of the sets together just to get one to, to work. Okay. So these headsets will be used by our special response team. It goes the other way around. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they'll be used by our special response team, our tactical medics, and our canine officers. And with the purchase of our new ballistic helmets a month ago, these actually will fit uh, with the, the use of the new helmets. So through the 1033 program, we tried saving the city $13,000, wow. but they just are not working. Mm -hmm. But with the 1033 program over the years, with the purchase of our Max Pro, 
aim <coughs> uh, gear bags. We've um, purchased probably a million dollars worth of equipment at zero cost to the city of Port Huron or the city residents. Wow. Uh, if I may, so the, these are replacements, correct? They're brand new. They are, so the, those are brand new. That set is brand new. Okay. The ones that we got through the 1033 program were used. Okay, so they were used. Yeah, okay. we were trying to get them, and we thought we could piecemeal them together. Mm -hmm. They're just not working. Are they the same makers of that? Same, same makers. Same makers, just new. Okay. Right. And okay. when we're on an operation, we have to be able to communicate with dispatch, with fellow officers, and with uh, EM, you know, the EMS. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, Margo. Any other questions from council? I have a question. You have a question? I hesitate to ask so I don't sound dumb, but does the K-9 actually get a set to hear? Oh, <laughs> Lord have mercy. K-9 officers. Gotcha. <laughs> well, when you said it, I was like, I can see what the <clears throat> helicopter gets noisy. That would be interesting, though. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. That would be interesting, yes. Mayor Rep? Yes, Council Member Ward. Just a quick question on, these are 21 of them. Is that pretty much enough supply that we need for this thing, or yes, it'll take at any one time? Yep, take care of our special response team, 12 members, our six tactical meds, our two canine officers, <laughs> and our one uh, rapid response officer that's assigned to our special response team. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else? Thank you. We'll take the vote. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to resolutions number one. Authorizing 11 payments. Is there a motion? So moved. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, is there a second? Support. Council Member Ashford. Any questions, discussion? Madam Mayor, I would note that there was two change orders, change orders in there, one for Roselawn for about 49,000, one from Vandenberg and Moak for about 56,000 reduction in street costs. We came in about $100,000 and some change under budget on those two projects. Reduction is always good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mayor Rep. Yes, Council Member Ashford. And then also uh, the, uh, the lakeside improvements. Yes. With one of those, how is that going? The lakeside park improvements? Uh -huh. Do we have Nancy here to give an update? She is here. And we got a lot of questions about this previously, and mm -hmm. so I think people want to know what's happening the status Mayor and city council um the path this was the part of the dnr grant that we received so the pathway is already in and the new pavilion will be going up the new picnic shelter so it also will provide you know it's it's ada accessible now on both sides of the park with the new walkway and also we have cement pad for the extra portage ends that we need for all the crowds and so we we're able to put some benches along there as well so it's gonna look really nice and again it's part of the um, DNR grant that we received so this picnic shelter will be larger than the other one and uh, be able to be rented on the weekends as the other one is for different gatherings okay. Okay. Madam Mayor and Council as a cost-saving effort as well we were able to tap our McKinsey concrete contract to do some of the sidewalk work work out there at a much lower quantity rate than what was bid so when we bid it out, the concrete work that the contractor came back was a little bit higher. So we said, don't do the concrete work. We'll use our existing concrete bid with McKinsey at a lower price to help make that project more cost effective. And so good job on Nancy and uh, our engineering department for coming it's up with actually that. Actually, our engineering department has done a really good job adding up the project. So. And, so that, um, yeah, right. and so that'll take care of something. And that seating and stuff, like when it does come that time, that'll be all taken care of yes. also. Correct? Yes, and we okay. also had a couple donations of some or any ornamental trees along the new oh, pathway great. as well. So oh, okay. we're putting that in the spring. Okay. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Council Member. I was just I was just kind of wondering up with the popularity of the pavilions, and I've seen it happen with the county and even with ours and stuff. How are we going to regulate? Uh, is it going to be on a first come first serve basis? Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, if you're a resident of the city of Port Huron, the rates are less. And if you're not, then a little bit more, but like the, almost like the recreation the fees. Okay. Yeah, so Good. you go to our parks department and you get a permit, and the day of your rental, we put your name at that particular pavilion for the day. So, what what do you look like on your calendar to start leasing these out? Well, the Maybe. little one rented out almost every weekend this summer, and um, the big one is obviously just going in. So, I imagine once we, you know, 
we'll see a lot of people. Okay. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Uh, Mayor Up. Councilmember Warden. I just <clears throat> have a, uh, again, a, a comment and uh, it's uh, a thank you, of course. It's not often. So I want to give a lot of uh, uh, thanks to uh, not only the management and the uh, the contractors that did the Van is the Vandenberg place and the uh, Roselawn Roselawn uh, Roselawn uh, court to have that pretty close to a hundred thousand dollars under the contract award um, again that's outstanding work uh, and it's uh, you, you definitely would hear our uh, concerns if it was over so I definitely want to make sure it's equal that we appreciate it coming that much under thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion? We'll take the vote. Councilmember Pemberton? <clears throat> yes. Councilmember Warden? Yes. Councilmember Archibald? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item two, please. Approving the agreement <clears throat> with Tetra Tech of Michigan PC for professional engineering services for the South Grit Channel rehabilitation and replacement of odor control system at the wastewater treatment plant. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Pemberton, is there a second? Second. Councilmember Harris. Can you give us a... Madam Mayor, I'll have our DPW Director, Eric Witter, provide you a quick <laughs> overview of this project. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Good this project includes uh, two things at the wastewater plant. The rehabilitation of the two grit channels, uh, the design of those. Uh, it'll be a multi-year project as far as the actual construction, but this is for the design services of those two projects. Those are um, channels original to the plant from 1975. Uh, the second part of the project design-wise is the odor control system, which was installed in 2005 and is beginning to experience problems both physically and within the plant. Now, Eric, the reason, one of the benefits of the odor control system is we have, if the council remembers, we've been doing a lot of pipe and duct replacement inside the facility, and that is because of the corrosive environment from inside the wastewater plant itself. And so as part of this project, this should alleviate the corrosion problem uh, to a certain degree within the plant, correct? Correct. Okay. And it won't smell bad, is correct? <laughs> There's never any guarantees. But okay. Hopefully. I was going to say, I don't want to get rid of that. <laughs> Is there other questions? Yeah, Mayor Rupp. Yes. So, so the, the, the issue is inside the plant with the corrosion? Is that yes, what you're saying? Yes, we're experiencing corrosion, and like city manager stated with the duct work, there's some corrosion with electrical conduits, that sort of thing. So we suspect that the chemicals that are used um, for the odor control system currently might be affecting that. We've gotten things under control, but we still need to address the issues and part of this will be a study to determine if that's the system that we want to move forward with or if there's other technology. So you haven't really found the, the real root cause issue? Within the last few years, they, the plant staff's done a great job making adjustments to things uh, within the plant and the odor control system, uh, regulated some chemical use. So we think we have it under control, but it's a matter of just getting um, overall assurance that the issues are corrected and then obviously addressing the aging equipment with the current order control system. So does it have anything to do with the piping or anything or? Um, there were issues in the past with the ductwork that failed so um, past couple years we brought before city council order control ductwork replacement so that's helped but some of this ductwork that we put in a few years back um, going on maybe four years is corroded since it's been installed so okay. there still is some ongoing issues. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mayor Rep. Any other questions? Mayor Rep. Council Member just, Harris. Just a comment. I wanted to thank the staff for being letting me pester them this morning on information on this because it was kind of confusing, but uh, I think it should be known that uh, with this contract we're going to save about $90,000. So, uh, uh, but I just wanted to thank for all the help that I got today in rounding up the information. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else? Mayor Rep. Council Member Warden. Just a quick question on this is, um, it's, it looks like on page, uh, well, packet number, page 34, <laughs> it's 1-2-A. It just has the you know, basic services, the scope here. Part one is about estimated 118,000 and part two is 218,000. This is gonna be for the engineering staff to get in and try to evaluate exactly what's going, what, what it's gonna take to, to potentially get this thing 
reworked and fixed? Yes, and it also includes their services to do the actual design and construction documentation and oversight. Okay. So um, I guess do we know how long maybe how long this is going to be estimated to take for this first you know phase part one and part uh, two? Part one grit channels is relatively straightforward. Um, we'll probably get construction documents together probably within the next six months or so. Odor control is a lot more complicated, so there's a third party that uh, the consultant has brought on board to do um, some testing the environment, that sort of thing, get um, the constituents of the air, and that helps base the design of the odor control system. Thank so. you very much. Appreciate it. Anything else? Thank you, and congratulations on your new position. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. We will take the vote. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. <coughs> Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item three, please. Authorizing the allocation of 2018 Home Community Housing Development Organization funds according to St. Clair Nonprofit Housing Corporation's proposal to acquire, rehabilitate, and resell 1230 Union Street to a moderate income purchaser. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Council Member Ashford and Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Is there any discussion? Um, Mayor, I mean, uh, yeah, Mayor, Madam Mayor. Yeah, I'd just like to ask, um, and we always seem to ask this, David, the same thing, um, whereas only one proposal was received. Um, and it's kind of like been historic. Do, do you have a plan to change that, or, or it's not in your scope of trying to do anything about that? When we look at partnering uh, in, in the use of the CHOTO funds, uh, it's a requirement of HUD that you do have a CHOTO approved. Right. Uh, organization um, and what that means is that they have uh, years of experience in, in uh, both in the uh, expenditures making sure they're adhering to the HUD guidelines so that uh, group is a very limited group okay. and some have the appetite for these larger projects and complete home renovations so that in of itself limits the scope of uh, the number of companies or Nonprofits coming to us. Okay. So that's why you see the limitation as far as the number one of organizations coming forward. Okay. So is there something that those other organizations can do to be uh, qualified? Uh, if they uh, would take on housing projects and take uh, up projects of this scope, mm -hmm. uh, then they will have the experience that they then can also apply for the CHOTO status and, uh, and also apply for our funds. Okay. But then, this isn't a question or anything, but you um, actually get more distance out of it through your limited sources, because when you do give the funding to the, the home, I mean, they do some of what you can't do on, since you get such a limited, uh, limited uh, what is it, attention to it. Mm -hmm. So you make it grow by doing more with that organization. Absolutely. It, it, right. uh, and uh, with, in, it gives us the confidence to know that when we do allocate these funds that they're being utilized in the correct manner and uh, we've worked with this group in the past have done a fantastic job with the quality of the homes mm -hmm. uh, so we're looking forward to another fine uh, fine home renovation okay. for our union yep i know that's one of our crown jewels and i know when we were campaigning uh we had one of our our great uh candidates speak about the home ownership you know in uh partnering with the, the banks and everything. And I know that was a crown jewel because I think we had Detroit even calling us to see how we are doing things. So I just want to, you know, let them know that we're listening and you're still working on that to make that even better. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, you Thank you. Any other questions before he sits down? Thank you. <coughs> we will take the vote. Council member Archibald. Yes. <coughs> Council member Ashford. Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. <coughs> Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to item seven. Recommending the Michigan Liquor Control Commission approve above all others the application of Hip Hip Hooray LLC, 1026 Military Street, for a B Hotel license pursuant to Public Act 501 of 2006. Is there a motion? So moved. Council Member Warden. Wasn't it? 
Yeah. yeah. I was going to say you said it. <laughs> that sound like me? <laughs> no, it didn't sound like you. <laughs> no, I was just sort of very forceful. I, didn't, was, I wasn't, wasn't quite it? sure. A second, please. Second. <laughs> there you go. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Is there a discussion? I assume you have discussion. Uh, Mayor Rep, about yeah. I, do, agenda. I want to pull this off consent agenda because this is actually uh, Regarding the Harrington Inn, and again, uh, uh, strong uh, support and recommendation here for uh, uh, for them to be able to uh, uh, apply for uh, a liquor license for that uh, incredible um, project that they're going to do. And I just want to make sure that uh, you know, even though it says hip hop here on, it actually is uh, uh, you know our wonderful uh, new uh, uh, community members that are investing in our community with such a which a great such a great uh, historic building that I'm looking forward to. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? We will take the vote. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. That concludes our agenda. A couple of announcements. First, I was remiss earlier it is Veterans Day celebrated today, so thank you to our veterans for their service and for their sacrifice. Uh, Mayor, excuse me, uh, point of order, do we have any veterans in our audience tonight? I don't, with, if you do, stand. Do we stand, stand up? Stand. Let's give our there veterans a round of applause. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I missed that earlier with all the everything going on. So, uh, city offices will be closed November 22nd and 23rd in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. And then one other thing, um, I just wanted to make sure I acknowledged because Port Huron Northern had a wonderful football season. Oh, yeah. And uh, they were 2018 MAC Blue champions, and they haven't actually won this title in over 30 years. And then they were 2018 district champs for the first time in their history. Now, Friday night they played in the regional trans, uh, championship game and they did lose. However, I think they deserve a round of applause because they had to win. <laughs> Perhaps we could get somebody to, maybe we could get them to come and we could get them a certificate or something at the next council meeting? Yes, we have a connection there. there yeah. yeah, I know you do. Slight connection. <laughs> Slight connection. So that would be great if you could do that. And uh, that concludes what I have to say. Is there anybody else on council who has anything to add before we call for adjournment? Mayor Rep. Council Member Harris. Along with the end of the football season for high school, starts a <laughs> hockey season for high school hockey. And, oh, and I know Porter Northern is playing uh, uh, Detroit Catholic Central Thursday night and Cranbrook on, uh, on Saturday. And plus there's the Thanksgiving tournament. So uh, just, just want everybody to know that we just go from one season to the next. So. Yep. Thank one you. sport to another. Hope you can see it show up. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor Rep. Council Member Warden. Yeah, just to piggyback on, again, congratulations to uh, Port Huron Northern's high school football team, outstanding, uh, representing our city, uh, going so far, so proud of those kids. Um, as far as the, the hockey, I just wanted to ask, um, is it the Larry Manns tournament? Is that what's on? Um, right. Is that the Thanksgiving weekend? Yep. Right after, and is that going to be held, uh, of course, most, mostly at McMorrin? Yep. So, yeah, I, I usually attend that. I want to make sure we got that out when it's a, the Thanksgiving tournament's actually hosted right here in the city of Port Huron, and it's usually a, it's a, it's a pretty long standing uh, uh, tradition. So, thank you. Anyone else? Madam Mayor, I just want to thank the cemetery crew, Tom at the cemetery, and the, they got the Veteran Cemetery. The lighting project is now complete. So if you drive by the Veterans Cemetery at night, it looks just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so if you have not done that yet, drive by Veterans Cemetery at night. Tonight would be a good night to do it and see the new lighting project to honor our veterans. Uh, it's extremely tastefully well done. It is. Thank you. Anyone else? I would ask for a motion to adjourn then, please. So moved. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>